Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Pump. In the first half of this episode, we talk about why obesity is not a disease. We also talk about why exercise does not have its origins in white supremacy, even though it was suggested in an article recently by Time Magazine that that is the case. Lots of controversial topics in this front half, but we have a lot of fun. In the second half of the show, we answer four questions from our Mind Pump Media Instagram account. Questions such as, what are your thoughts on the carnivore diet? Is it good, bad, or ugly? What are the best cues to get somebody to retract or pull back their shoulder blades when lifting? What are their thoughts on deload weeks? And can I do my compound lifts at the end of my workout because all the equipment's being used at the beginning of my workout? All right, enjoy the show. All right, it's truth time. Obesity is not a disease. It's a result of choices and your lifestyle. Now, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's not a disease. Don't buy into this crap that they're starting to sell now in media and with Western medicine. So there was this- uh, this, this Is that making its rounds again? Yeah. That uh, disease uh, they've been trying to, They've been trying to push that narrative for a long time. And there was this, um, I don't know, it's like documentary style uh, episode on CBS where this doctor was being interviewed and they were talking about how obesity is a disease. I want to be very clear with, with uh, first off, why I think they're pushing this so hard. Western medicine is imperfect, just like all forms of medicines. There's things that they do, they do very well. There's things that they do very poorly. One of the things that Western medicine does poorly is treat chronic diseases or chronic issues or challenges. They treat acute things very well, but chronic things they treat very poorly, especially things that, that are require lifestyle changes. Also, uh, this is not a surprise to most people, but the Western medicine is driven heavily by its biggest producer of revenue, which is the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industry. What always follows when something is determined to be a quote unquote disease, what always follows is a medical treatment. Right. And this is part of the game. Part of the game is it's a disease. It's not a result of your lifestyle. It's not a result of your choices. It's not your fault. But don't worry, we have the drug. We have the drug. Isn't that can there help you. some new um, drugs coming out? To yes, yeah, yes. Okay, there, there are drugs now that are out, and now new it's ones all that are making out sense that actually effectively cause people to lose weight, mainly through appetite. But well, actually, that's really the issue is through appetite suppression. Um, and so I think this is all kind of going together. But look, here, here's your evidence for the reason why it's not a disease. Didn't exist um, not that long ago. Obesity was rare not that long ago. It's, it's it was a it was a wealthy problem. Is that true evidence? So I mean, there's got to yeah. be some cases where diseases come out out of nowhere that we didn't have before, right? Well, if you if 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 the disease is the result of your lifestyle, can you call it a disease? In other words, if uh, let's say smoking increases by you know five thousand. No, I don't. I mean, I don't disagree with you, but I don't know if what you said is evidence. Is that it? because it didn't exist before and it exists now. Well, is that truly evidence? That's a good so. question So, or a good, good statement. So uh, what does a disease imply when someone says this is a disease? It implies that um, it's- You have no control over it. Yeah, or very little control. Oh, well, yeah, little control. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. This really isn't something so that- Some genetic factor or it's, yeah, something it, like that. Exactly. Um, and if you go back just not that long ago, a few generations, obesity was extremely rare. Um, it's literally the result of our modern lifestyles. And, and I don't want to downplay this. Um, our, it's not easy at all. It's not easy to live a modern, in a modern world and not become obese. Everything's actually designed to, to promote that, but it's not something that you can't do anything about. We've worked in this field for over two decades. You could definitely solve this problem. It's just going to take just work. It takes work, yeah. And it's challenging. Do you, and, find, do you find it interesting that this is this is resurfacing at the same time as the the article that's going viral right now too? With the the gyms are ran by like white supremacists. Oh no, man! <laughs> I mean, what it was, I shared that article that it, that uh, exercise uh, the white supremacy roots of exercise. That's right? what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. There's a propaganda. Um, Right, like, listen, it's, it's a disease, right you can't now. help yourself, and oh, by the way, gyms are racist anyways. Like, isn't that weird? It's kind of like all coming around yeah. the same time. Like, what's the, and then you have- Creating the, this the, hostile kind of vision of what, like, exercising entails. And it, then also, I shared the article with you last night, the, the FDA is about to approve some, like, super weight loss drug. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, don't, you know, don't go to the racist gyms, and oh, it's a disease, oh, let us help Just you. take chemicals, we'll, we'll solve it for you. Yeah, no, listen, um, it's, uh, if you take away people's 
ability to empower themselves and to, to affect positive change themselves, if you take that away from them, what you're left with are very manipulatable people. You have people now that are easily manipulated. When somebody does something for themselves, they care for themselves, they feel a sense of autonomy. It's really hard to, it's harder, I should say, to manipulate them and to make them scared. <clears throat> and the attack on fitness is uh, all part of this thing that's happening, that seems to be happening right now. And they're going to attack fitness. We Look, I'm glad we have the podcast because it's all recorded. We, I called this out. I've actually predicted this as I started seeing these articles start to surface, that they're going to demonize fitness. They're going to demonize improving your health. They're going to call it uh, fat phobic. If you want to lose weight, that's hating your body. It's self-hate and it's hating yourself. And I, I understand that you can hate yourself in a way that will make you try to lose weight. And we've talked about that a million times, but uh, that trying to pursue a healthier lifestyle is not a fat phobic uh, self-hating thing. It's a self-care thing. Um, it, racist origins of, of, you know what's funny about this? You want to know, I'll, get, I'll use, this is going to be real controversial. I don't give a shit. If you want to talk about roots that are racist or roots that are whatever, why don't they attack uh, Planned Parenthood, whose founder literally was somebody that promoted, well, what's the term, eugenics. Eugenics, yeah, uh, eugenicists. Her, this is her quotes, mm -hmm. her quote. Why don't they attack that? Because it's not, their propaganda has nothing to do with that right now. Right now it's about attacking fitness. And so what, is there truth to you know racist root? First of all, no, maybe in some cases, but that's not what fitness is all about at all. It's ridiculous to me. Yeah. So I think it's silly. But yeah, obesity is not a disease. Stop calling it a disease. You have so much control over obesity for yourself in very, very rare cases, is it something that you literally have no control over? But you have so much control over it. That doesn't mean it's, it's easy. It's hard. And it's hard mainly because the world is organized in a way where being obese is the default. And being fit and healthy means it requires, you have to plan it out. Yeah, like You have steps you have to take in order to prevent it. Yeah, like yeah. overeating was something that was hard to do in the past. Now it's so easy. Food's so accessible. It's so palatable. It's, it's engineered to make you overeat. <clears throat> Activity was like the default before, like you're going to move because you got to wash your clothes. You got to, you know, maybe hunt, you got to build things like you're going to move. Now you have to schedule movement because everything's so sedentary. So that's all, that's just what's happening is you have to now organize ways to get yourself to be active and plan and create disciplines and uh, around nutrition in order to live in this modern lifestyle. That's, that's really what you it is. You have to be an advocate for yourself. I mean, and that's uh, everything else out there really is, is going in the opposite direction and, and creating these um, solutions for basically all of our struggles. And meanwhile, the struggle itself is like where we get most of the benefits. Uh, and so it's, it's interesting for me to see how that's like really just taking over all the landscape now we're, of any kind of struggle. We're going to have to seek it more than we ever have before, you know, yes. like, What's up, everyone? Here's the giveaway for today's episode, MAPS Anabolic. This is the first MAPS program. It's the one that started it all. It's also the most popular one. You can win it for free, but here's how you enter. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. And boom, you got free access to MAPS Anabolic. Also, we created three bundles this month for January that will help almost everybody, okay? Each bundle gives you about nine months of planned workout. So that's nine months from now until nine months from now, everything's set up for you. Here's the three bundles. We have the new to weightlifting bundle. We have the body transformation bundle and we have the new year extreme intensity bundle. So beginner, intermediate, advanced, all of them on sale. Uh, so discounted heavily, go check them out. Go to click on the link at the top of the description below is where you'll find more information and you'll be able to sign up. All right, here comes the show. Can't help but bring up the conversation that you and I were having yesterday. That's where my mind just went. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, texting. I was texting Sal. Funny, he sent over a text, and I says, bro, I've been talking about this whole last week over vacation with my friends, and I know I brought it up a couple weeks ago uh, with the chat GPT, but I, the more and more I continue to see uh, what it's capable of, it's, it's very alarming, uh, the direction. I mean, it's obviously going to be amazing for many things, but it's going to, boy, is it going to take... A responsibility for a lot of things uh, from a lot of people. 
And I think at first we're going to, we're going to think that's amazing. I think we're going to go like, Oh, this is great. I don't have freeze to me up. Like, I don't completely. have to think like this. I don't yeah. have to use this. It's like, dude, do you know how, do you know how clueless people are on how big of a deal this is? This is right now. They have no idea. They have no, so it, I was talking to my cousin. Who, I couldn't stop thinking about it. You guys had your own little thing going on, but like when I left to get on a plane, I was like thinking, obsessing over it Yeah, because it just is so big once you really start to put a lot of effort into what that's going to do to everything. So my cousin, who's, he's deep in the tech world, right? So he was uh, one of the first people at a big tech company. He's, he's now founded his own. He works with like some of these brilliant, <laughs> smart people. And him and I were talking and I was already like, this is going to be crazy. And he just made me feel even worse about it because he goes, he goes, first of all, <laughs> Sal, he goes, what the internet did to the world, how big of a change that the internet produced took right. like two or three decades. Yeah. Like it was invented, started getting implemented. And then within two or three decades, it yeah. completely changed everything. Well, cause we were all contributing to it. Right? Well, we were part of that you know, process. This doesn't even include us. No. And we said, he said to me, he says, this is going to do what the internet did times a hundred, maybe times a thousand in five years, what it took two or three decades for the internet to do. And so I said, what do you mean? And he goes, Sal, he goes, it can write code. He goes, all mm -hmm. you need to do right now is prompt it, know how to prompt it. Yeah. It'll write code for you. He goes, do you know what the step, the next step of teaching it to prompt itself? He goes, we've already taken the big step. It's that, that's a small step. We go, when that happens, that's it. It's a done deal. And so how much is it going to even shift education, right? Like education right. is going to be around how to prompt. It's no longer going to be you learning yourself the information. It's how do you prompt the AI to give you what you need Until it to. Until they figure out how to prompt themselves. Dude, I'm going to oh. read to you what, so he's, so as we're having this conversation, he's like, dude, he goes, read this. <laughs> he goes, I asked, I think I sent it to you, right? Out oh, you the, sent it to me. I saw it. Yeah. He yeah. goes, I asked, uh, or maybe I sent it to the group. He says, I asked. It was uh, your cousin who asked this? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. just sent me over the thing. I didn't realize that he prompted it. to. to no, he goes, I asked uh, chat GPT. Uh, here, I'll read it to you so, you so people can see. Write me. This is literally the question he asked it, right? Write me a disruptive, a disruptive blog post describing how generative AI will lead to humans being modern day pets. This is what the AI machine set back right away. <laughs> As generative AI continues to advance, it's possible that it could eventually surpass human intelligence in many areas. While this could bring many benefits, it could also lead to a future in which humans are relegated to a status similar to that of modern day pets. Imagine a world in which AI systems are able to handle all of the tasks currently performed by humans. Ooh, pets. Yeah, from driving cars to performing surgery to composing music. With AI taking care of all of the necessary work, humans might find themselves with a lot of free time in their hands. As a result, humans could become more and more dependent on AI systems for the needs and wants. They might become accustomed to being pampered and entertained by their AI assistants, much like a person might pamper and entertain their, their pets. This could lead to a significant shift in the balance of power between human and AI with AI systems potentially taking on a more dominant role. Humans might find themselves at the mercy of their AI overlords, unable to do Wait, much more. This was written by an AI. By an AI. They yeah. called themselves overlords already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, so all, it's telling us what it's going to do. This is crazy. And then what's, I had, what's crazy is that I, I, as I went down the rabbit hole of like trying to figure out like how this is applies, I could not think of an industry that it doesn't disrupt. I could not come up with like, a, like I was, uh, Katrina was like, Man, are you really, are you really stressing out about this? I said, honey, if we don't, if we're not actively thinking about this, what we currently do as fun as it's been right now, will disappear. Like it Easy. Li literally Easy. will, will disappear right from, it'll, someone will pull the rug right out from underneath us because he, when we wrote, when we had it, when we prompted it to write a mind pump episode and I saw what it put out, I was just like, holy shit. Like that's, and that's now that's the first yeah. iteration yes of this thing yes and 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 as you go down and go like at every type of profession is it's going to be disrupted so so here's the thing so I'm as just imagining I, all us all finally as furries because we're pets yeah. it's, it's all making sense it's happening yeah so here's so the the fear the original fear with AI was oh my god it's gonna get so smart it's gonna invent other AI and then it's gonna view humans as threats and then just wipe us out right that was the big threat I don't think that's the threat neither do I I think the threat is this it will literally solve every problem all our problems give us everything we want and we're gonna be left with Nothing. Now, why is that a big problem? Sadness. Because everybody's going to be like, oh, that sounds like a utopia. Well, it does if you understand how to 
create meaning in your life and purpose in your life. No way. This goes and all the way. Don't know this goes all the way back to episode like 100 or whatever when you shared the Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. I just think that's. I mean, how how applicable is that to what we're talking yeah. about right now? I mean, that's literally. We are moving in that direction. I do not think the Terminator thing is the thing. I don't think like that at all. No, or the Machia X or whatever. I don't think that's where we're going. I absolutely think it's going to be saying. like a genie. Like imagine having a genie that could give you any wish. Yep. Yeah. But now it's real. Yeah. Imagine now. Every and at, human and on at Earth first has glance, that. most people are going to think that's amazing. Most people are going to think that's an, that's going to be that is going to be oh utopia, and then you're going to get it, and then you're going to realize you're in fucking hell. Do you want to know who I think is going to like survive that the best? People like the Amish. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Because everybody else, it's going to outcompete everything. It'll outcompete anything and everything is what's going to happen. And it's going to happen not in like, I was thinking to myself like, oh, when I'm like 80. I'm going to be like one of those Alaskan people, dude, that just like break off and just like shoot my dinner. Yeah, yeah. Every day, just to get away. Hey, tell from me it. though, my my theory on the, the plugged hard. in and the yeah. unplugged division is not going to be like a thing. Like that is going to be a thing. There's going to be totally. people that are going to think that we're crazy for not wanting to adopt totally. everything it's capable of doing, and then there's going to be a small percent. You know, I said uh, we divided in half, and think you made the argument, and I don't like, disagree yeah, no, with you. Like You're like it's not going to be half, and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to argue there because you're probably right because I would think that 80 percent of the people plus are going to fall into like, oh, this is amazing, you know? And then the, there's going to be a sm much smaller percentage that is going to see the writing on the wall. Well, you know like, what the challenge cool. is? The challenge is that, because, you know, we're pretty good at, at solving problems for ourselves. We'll notice a trend. I'm talking about just humanity, and I'm talking macro, not micro, right? If you look big, that something happens, and we realize within a few decades that, uh-oh, this is not good. Let's revert. Let's bring it back. Let's figure things out. So I'll give you a good example. Um, heavily processed foods. Heavily processed foods really didn't start to become a staple until probably the 70s, 80s. And now we have obesity and now we're aware of obesity and we're trying to figure out how to solve it. But within, it took us, I don't know, what, four decades, five decades. Okay. You got AI that can do anything for you in five years, 10 years. That's not enough time for us to figure out anything. It's going to be boom, done. Yeah. And then we're going to be where? Like trapped or like, why would I want to choose hard? Think about that. It's going to be, that's going to be the argument. Why would I want to go build something it's, and work? Yeah. So when, Neanderthal. Yeah. When I could sit here and just push euphoria buttons and do what I want and not work. And Now, where does he, where does he, okay, right now we sound very pessimist about it. Now, it, can you flip that script and be optimistic about all this? And if you were to force yourself to be extremely optimistic, what would it sound like? Like, does that mean like, so is that the, the optimistic version of this go like, it's absolutely going to do all those things, but then we'll just have new problems to solve. Now we'll have to do other things that will, so we'll still find ways to challenge ourselves and we'll have other problems to solve, but it will provide all this extra freedom or time or whatever. I mean, can you see it that way? Okay. So here's what I was thinking about that, right? Cause huh. I, th cause I think the AI is going to solve all the problems. So we'll come up with problems. AI will solve it still for us. But I think what's funny, what's funny is as I was thinking about this, I'm like, okay, if AI is like smart and it really starts to figure things out and it understands human psychology, what if AI is like this? We're like, Hey, why are, are we all so depressed and anxious? Like, like tells us. And the AI is like, well, you guys got to develop a spiritual practice mm. and do hard shit. Ah, shut up, AI. <laughs> 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 I don't do that stuff. This mind's broken. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the one that doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a pill. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, I feel better. Uh, great. Euphoria. Yeah. I mean, that's not um, even optimistic. I need an optimistic answer. Well, what, gotta... if, what if the AI does this? Now we're going well, to okay. get real weird. What if the AI is like, well... I could create an alternate reality that you plug into and it's like 30 minutes, but in reality you perceive it as 90 years where you meet challenges and you have, oh, wow. you develop wisdom and that's what we're living in now. Maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's the cycle oh, that God. we keep going through. Uh, no, what's that, um, that one, uh, I, I forget what, what practices like astrophysicists or whatever. It's like Michio. Oh, Michio Kaku. Yeah. So okay. he talked about is like that, a cartoon? different levels. No, no, it's his name. <laughs> no, it's it's, cartoon, that's dude. like a Goku or fucking <laughs> no. was super Saiyan fucking no, cartoon. No, 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 <laughs> no, yeah, no. He's, he's a like real scientist, like, real like smart. Name. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant guy but he was talking about like uh these different evolutions of civilizations and so it's like we've i think there was like four or five different versions of it right and so i think 
uh, if you look at it from an op- optimistic perspective, like maybe we're just growing into like this whole new level of a civilization where it's like, okay, if we have the AI and everything, we're able to accomplish a lot more and build things real fast and all this. But now the new sort of challenge is to be so expansive that now we replicate that on a new frontier, a new planet. And then it's like, now we're like bigger in terms of like, uh, the space like starts to um, makes more sense to get out there and, and expand. I so so I I could see that, but then there's this side of me is always like we have no idea because we've never lived in a world where we weren't the absolute smartest creatures. Right. Like we've always been. Well, to that we, point, we we concede that right. Well, to, well, to that point yeah. too, mathematically the the odds of us even being able to predict or be on it are so, so, so that's what I mean. Oh, yeah. Like we, like Nobody's even all of the speculating the we're doing right now, it's like, it's going to look nothing like that. Yeah. That's who knows? Just, yeah. Yeah. Who that's, knows? That's the, wi- like. that's the wild. It's thing. just my, the, the whole point I will say is that people have no idea. People literally have no idea what is about what we're about to be hit with. I don't know. I mean, go on there. It's all red flags for me. I'm going to tell you right now, go on there. If you haven't gone on there, gone on there. And ask it whatever you want. And get Listen, weird I mean, and, if and you don't, if you don't, if you don't recognize that you, to me, the biggest thing you, for everyone has to pay attention to is that it's going to change everybody's industry in one way or another. Whether you look at that optimistically or pessimistically, I don't care. But if you, if you're not aware enough to know that it's going to shake up what you currently yeah. do for a living, I don't care yeah. what you do because I couldn't think of a, a job where it is not going to be applicable to that type of a a field and it's not going to change it somehow. And if you're not paying attention, you will get left behind. If you're an entrepreneur and you've built or you've created something as we have, and you think it's not going to change the landscape, you're a fool. And you will get left we go behind. from driver to passenger. Like one hundred percent, we're going to be pets, dude, just begging for treats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please. Yeah. You know? Well, or or do we just <clears throat> combine with them? You know, do we just let it? Well, that's that's Elon's uh, uh, solution, right? He thinks it's inevitable. He he's thinks- like that's the only way. I really have no idea where he's at with Neuralink and all that, but I mean, hey, speaking of him, dude, Twitter is is already getting kind of cool, dude. I know. It's hey, how serendipitous is that? I got kicked off Instagram, bro. How went to Twitter and now he bought it and it's getting better. The features and stuff they're plugging in. I heard how, how, how dumb do you have to be to be the, the people writing about him and talking shit about how he's gonna destroy bro, Twitter and take you're so it, dumb. So dude, this we, guy, we just talked about the propaganda machine. It's just okay. propaganda. Yeah. Here's how I know that the propaganda machine is in full overdrive. So it started with the extreme left attacking him. Now I'm seeing the extreme right. So Breitbart, which is it. So I follow left and right and in the middle pages because I try to keep a, I'm trying to be as balanced as possible because yeah. I know that both all the sides are all whatever. They're all fighting. Bro, they're article after article attacking his reputation, attacking him as like, oh, Tesla car caught fire. Oh, employee says this. Like, and I'm looking, I'm like, oh my God, all the people now are attacking him. And it, why? My theory is, is because he's uh, unraveling their propaganda machine by showing they're all colluding. Yeah. They're showing the how doors. like big tech and all that stuff is being used. You know, oh, yeah. that's what I think that's oh, happening. Yeah. But we'll, yeah. see, we'll see. What's, <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, you know, but it's in overdrive. Yeah, they're hammering him in overdrive. No, they no, they have been for a while now. It's it's funny. I just, I mean, I I think I tweeted out like a couple of weeks ago. I can't wait to see what what they what they report about in a year because it's going to be crushing. Mm-hmm. It's it is already. Right. It's, it's going to be crushing. More users, uh, and you know what? I, I was listening to the guys at All In, and they're very plugged into the tech world. They said that his moves at Twitter, because he got rid of like half, half the staff, mm-hmm. and Twitter's operating actually just fine, if not any any better. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the tech companies now in Silicon Valley are like, huh. Maybe we could. Cut. All you gotta, it's so simple. All you got to do is create something that's like semi unbal- un- unbiased. Well, that's yeah. also the natural progression of what's happening right now anyway. It's like yeah. that's what you, for for the economy to come back, we need to see the unemployment numbers go up anyway. So that's yeah. that's inevitable, right? Like I mean, there we still have at least two or three more fed fed hikes. You're going to cuz I mean, I thought we would see more of a correction by now and we still haven't. So that's coming. I mean, I don't, there's not a single economist that I know of now that doesn't predict 23 being a complete recession. Yeah. They were saying that co- consumer mm. spending is, that they're, they're going to, they're predicting it's really going to start to decline yes. because uh, s- the amount of well, debt we're people are trillions of dollars away. Like it's like monopoly money. Yeah. Well, and just, like? just average consumer, average yeah. consumer's debt is going up. So people haven't changed their spending habits yet. What they're doing is they're just putting more on their credit card. 
but at some point that starts to break. Yeah. And so they're saying, and especially oh. when you start to see all the unemployment go up. Yes. I mean, once that starts going up, that'll halt, that'll really start to halt that. But, but then you, to your point about the printing money, that's what makes me freak out and go like, maybe we'll just kick the can down the road even further. You keep printing money like that and just devaluing the dollar. Then you gotta, you gotta spend more to make more. You gotta, it's crazy where it's going, dude. It's really yeah. crazy where, where we're heading right now. I thought for sure by now we would have seen a bigger correction than where we're at. If you would have asked me earlier, earlier this last year, I would have been like, Oh yeah, it's it would already lost 20, 30% in real estate and stuff like that. But we're, it's not. I mean, that's all, that's why timing yeah. the market. Everybody's like, don't try to do that. <clears throat> you feel like if you feel the way you feel, then act. If you try and time it, you're almost always off. Almost nobody ever. Yeah. What are your right. what's your what your cousins and what your family saying about the stock market right now? They like, still think it's going to drop more, even more. Yeah. 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 Because of the unemployment, because we haven't seen that really hit yet. Yeah. And when that starts to hit, then they said, yeah, we're going to probably see a, a bigger drop. Mm. But um, again, try to predict it when it's going to happen. Speaking of markets, gotta be Nostradamus. Did you guys uh, see all the controversy with Equinox? What they said on uh, yes. January first? Yeah, marketing play, in my opinion. Oh, of course. What was the statement? So no, they weren't selling. accepting any any applications January one for new memberships. <laughs> but okay. January two, they are. <laughs> yeah. It was just January first. <laughs> Which, by the way, what do we Buys what, what, what do we been say forever about January one in the gyms, anyways? That's it's a, not it's a when fucking ghost town. It's no, it's a ghost town. It's an extension. It's hype Everybody, so the the, the the mainstream narrative. They're not going to lose no money January. What? Nobody listen, goes to the gym yes, first the, of the, January. The mainstream narrative around January gyms is, oh, it's crazy. But we, being three guys that worked in the gym industry for as long as we have, it is not. Mm -mm. It is a ghost town until about mid January yes. when everybody gets out of their hangover and, and crazy vacation. In February. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mid to end January is when it starts to really pick up and it goes through February and March like crazy. Beginning of January, January one is is ghost town. Dude. It's like yeah. Christmas. People yeah. drag their feet. Yes. Nobody comes in. So come, they're all hung over from the night before. Yeah, the first week or two <laughs> so of, such a play. of January is an extension of December. So when you when you when you run big box jams. You see a huge decline in, you know, walk-in traffic, members, you know, working out, that stuff. Right around late October and then November and December, it's like the last quarter, right? December is the worst, especially as you get to Christmas, it's like a ghost town. It And then in January, what big box gyms do is they give you these massive goals. Here's your sales goal for January. It's huge. And everybody is way off of it. January 10th, January 11th. Yeah. You're like, oh my, and everybody's sweating. Oh my God, are we going to be able to hit goal? We're at 50% yeah, of goal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They gave me too big a goal. And then January like 11th, 12th hits. And then all of a sudden it's like the floodgates. Yeah. So Equinox, this was, this wasn't. It was I mean, brilliant. Yeah. I actually think it's brilliant because it also. And everybody's talking about it. Yeah. It got, it got everybody fired up. There was actually a bunch of people. Oh, it's elitist. Oh my God. This and that. So they got them. They're in the news. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. We're talking about it. Everybody's sharing and it. And here's it's, what they said. We aren't accepting new memberships today. It's not you. It's January. Yeah. So you are not a it's New Year's resolution. You. <laughs> no. Your life doesn't start at the beginning of the year. And it's not what being a part of Equinox is about. It's a brilliant market. The day that nobody buys whoever <laughs> Whoever was in charge, whoever was in charge really of marketing. coming up with that idea. It's pretty I, smart. It was very smart. Yeah. Very smart. Nobody's talking about 24-hour fitness. Nobody's talking about Planet Fitness right now. They're all talking about Equinox because of this. And Equinox don't give a shit because January 1, they don't do any revenue anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they, it was brilliant. And I it's think it's, it's a high-end, right? They're Equinox high-end. Yeah, $200 yeah, a month. Yeah, yeah so nice it's like a high-end gym. So they're really not dealing with the same uh, kind of consumers like a 24 or a crunch. Yeah. And so I, it's, it's brilliant on many levels because it, it even feeds into the elitist group that wants to be elite. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's, that's right. what I mean. We don't let the peasants in on, yeah, you, know, yeah, right? yeah. you know what I'm saying? So they all feel we're all oh, serious. like we're special. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, meanwhile, no one gives a shit because no one was going out to get a membership on January. Yeah, you imagine, <laughs> like, you imagine working for Equinox as a general manager and then you get this like December, you know, last week of December and you know, management's like, Hey guys, we're not allowing any new membership sales January 1. You'd be like, okay. <laughs> cool. I would have sold one. I, would, yeah. I had the day off anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I had the day off anyways. I see what you're doing. Yeah. You know, just to give an example of how effective some of this marketing can be, I one of the most effective, like in history, marketing strategies that a big box gym ever did and I was a part of it, not like like literally a part of it, but I worked for the company when this happened. You know the alien one? Yes. Yes, it was. 24 hour fitness. Yes. Put out, put out a billboard and it said, and it had like a UFO and like pictures They're of They're coming for the fat people first. It said when they come, they will eat the fat ones first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it created crazy controversy. Super offensive. Imagine oh if my they God. released that now. There were a couple protests or whatever. You know what happened <clears throat> to sales, membership sales from oh, that? Oh, through the roof. Through the roof. 
because of all the the, the free advertising mm-hmm. because of that. That's actually I'm actually surprised yeah. in the, in this climate why they have not brought that back. I mean that, that would be brilliant to bring that back to your point right now, like because it would be super controversial right now, even oh, more yeah. so than back th- back then. I think ninety percent of people you laughed balls at balls to do very that. very small. Maybe it will backfire now. Maybe now it's so people are so sensitive that they'll actually get like. Wouldn't that be that, <laughs> yeah. that would you're you're probably right. You know, speaking of marketing, you should do the right. We today we mentioned NCI, so talk about what they. Oh, you know what? Right okay, so here's something interesting about NCI. Since we're so talking about marketing. This is a, a you know it's obviously it's certification courses for trainers and coaches and. A part of what they do is they teach trainers and coaches how to build their business. So this I thought was really good. So they're giving away um, a segment of coaching that focuses on a few different things. But one thing in particular, which I thought is really smart, is teaching coaches and trainers how to use social media effectively to build their business. And the reason why I like this so much, so like how to create, let me see, Doug pulled it up, how to create social media content that I get you clients sample client intake forms, training on how to properly onboard a client and even the client results uh, framework. Uh, so, But the social media part is real important because when coaches and trainers ask me about social media, I have advice for them, but when we were trainers, this wasn't even a, a right, thing. Right. So yeah. I don't have like um, like real experience <clears throat> with building. Yeah, I wouldn't consider myself an expert in that. No. 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 But so, it is like, it's one of the most common things I get. It's mm-hmm. one of, it's it, probably it, number one. Yeah. Yeah. As far as DMS from other trainers, like asking your opinion. How do I use well, social media? Yeah. We, we, we got to a point where we didn't really, we were pulling ourselves out of being a trainer when social media was really kicking off. So yeah. it's like to, to use that to deliberately get conversions as clients is a whole nother beast. I, and I also think there is this, this facade around uh, that just being popular or getting a lot of views translates into a better business exactly. and it doesn't. And no. so I think there's a, a a more proper way than the average person thinks when they just look at the landscape and and including myself. I remember when I first came in, I, that's what I did. I was just looking at who was most popular on there. Just just get as many followers. Yeah. What are they doing to get all this attention and following and then trying to emulate that myself and then realizing like, Oh, just cause I'm getting, you know, a thousand likes on a picture cause you're half naked or you do something silly doesn't really translate into five new clients. I'd much rather have a post that gets way less views, way less attention. If it converts to, more conversion. Yeah, more clients. And well, so, remember that one girl? I think it was a girl. Remember that one girl? Yeah, the she, t-shirt one. Yeah, she had like 2 million followers and then she launched a t-shirt and I think she sold like, 12. Yeah, it was like yeah. 12, 12 shirts. Or so, <laughs> so you, have to, you have to build, you can't just have people following you. You have to build value. There's a whole process. 80% were just bots. Yeah, so I'm glad that the that they're doing this because it, this was not in a necessity when we were trainers. But now I think um, it's part of the business process, not necessarily the most important part, but it's a part of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, just like uh, maybe having a website was back yeah, when yeah. we were. Did you, know, you guys, uh, <clears throat> did you guys see the Dana White? Oh man. Oh, you sent that He's video. Mad. I watched the video. He already came, they, you know, they already came out, him and his wife already came out with a statement already. They, really? Okay, so, so who's the woman? That's his wife. Oh, that was his wife. You know his wife, you know him and his wife have been together for like 30 something years since high school. Wow. Okay, that changes it. I thought it was a different lady. Some random chick. No, no. <laughs> yeah. That's his that and she came out with a statement too. So they both came out with statements already. So she so okay. in the video, they're obviously at a nightclub. She I don't know, it looks like they're arguing. She smacks him. Yeah. And then he hits her back. Twice. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so which, you know, the, that not very good for Dana White, but so what's the statement? Yeah, it's not a good look. They uh, they both came out and said, "Listen, we've been together for 31 years. Stay out of our business." Like wow. and she came out and said we, they both came out and said we were very intoxicated. Um, it's that's not a behavior that's happened before. It's our business. Stay out of our business. I thought that was pretty crazy. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. So she came. She came out and said that he laid, laid out a statement like that, and they they said let, let us deal with our own. Our Holy own. cow. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, I don't know. I I, I feel like that's a, either a strong couple. <clears throat> Or there's some shit there that yeah like, you know so uh, Katrina and I were kind of mm, talking about it and and I agree with her on, on this too is just like if you're if you're willing to to do that in a public setting you most likely do that behind, behind closed, closed doors, doors for sure you know what I'm saying yeah like I the the the, the idea that 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 even if was it's an, just verbal mental abuse or something right going I on. mean because 
Yeah, because you're going to be more if, controlled. If Katrina was really drunk, by the way, I can't stand when Katrina gets really drunk, and she, I get really irritated with her. If she hauled off and slapped me, I would would refrain 100. percent Like just because that's who I am. That's who I am behind closed doors. That's who I am, yeah, and yeah. definitely in public. Yeah. In public, I'm less likely to say probably some things because I know I'm in public. Right. Where maybe closed doors, I'd say something that's l- l- probably a little more vicious or mean if behind closed doors than I would in a public. Because yeah, you're aware there's people around. That's you. right. Yeah. So if you make a, if you make a move like that in front of people there's got to be a little bit of like i don't give a fuck or this is normal behavior or so that part i thought you know like now, this has been practiced right <clears throat> now granted uh they stuck together in this yeah. um you know and that's understandable 31 years together and and i could see that uh them sticking together um which i i mean i support that i support a husband and wife if they're going to be together and stay together to get each other's back like that as they should but who knows what's happening i don't right. think that it was an anomaly i don't and I, you know either does katrina i'm like yeah you're you're probably right i mean if you if you're willing to do that in a nightclub what are you willing like to do? like like rather than just hitting her like smacking her back twice what, you know what would have happened in closed doors right uh-huh. right would have been a brawl right you know, oh, man, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, and by the way, not defending him um, at all, um, because I think uh, regardless if it's a woman or a man, if you're a lot bigger and stronger, I think you should always refrain, re- refrain, yeah. you know, like, you, you know, you know, like if, if you know, you can beat the shit out of somebody, <clears throat> um, then you have the responsibility of refraining unless you really have to defend yourself. OK, mm-hmm. but OK, also, this is also true. They could both be true. And I've this is I've taught my daughter this. I told her I said, don't ever hit somebody bigger than you and stronger than you, especially a man and expect that they will refrain. Yeah. Re- expect that they'll hit you back. Yeah. Because that's a huge mistake. You know, you think what this dude is going to be chivalrous because you may be in public or wherever behind closed doors, you go and hit a dude and you think, know, Oh, yeah. he's a big guy. He's not going to hit me back. No, I absolutely, you could be- I absolutely think that's the thing you teach your daughter. I think you absolutely say that because the truth is that there's going to be a lot of fucking assholes out there that won't. And I think that's the smartest thing to, to say to her. And I do think that there, there are, there are examples of women that push those, yes. those boundaries. Yes. You know? Because my mother you- was one of them. I watched mm. it. I watched it growing up. It was very difficult for me to see my, my, my parents, get into physical altercations. My stepfather was the one that was blamed for a lot of the stuff, but I was the oldest. And so I was in the middle of bringing the phone and nine times out of 10, not not every time my mom was the one that instigated it. My mom was the one that, you know, threw the frying pan at him. My mom was the one that busted the frame over his head. My mom was the one that hauled off and punched him in the nose. Like, and, and then a lot of times he would be grabbing her. I mean, I watched my stepdad get hauled off by the police because she had bruises all over her arm, but the bruises were because he was covering his head and my mom was swinging uncontrollably after him. So there's examples yeah. of of women in situations like that that are completely out of line because they know that they're hitting on a man and a man is not supposed to do that. So and that's why I had this conversation with my daughter because I think if you're a guy and you hit a guy, you you, you naturally assume like there's a threat of potential violence. Right. But I think a lot of I think some women because we still teach men and this is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. We teach men don't hit women, don't hit women. Don't. Yeah. They think they assume well, I, I'm going to hit him. He's not going to hit me back. And that's not going to always happen. You may get hit back and, yeah. and that's not going to be good. Just like if you're a small dude, you know, if I if like, what's his name? What's that big, uh, strong man competitor guy? Was it the mountain? What's his Th- name? Thor. Yeah. Thor. Like half Thor. Yeah, yeah. But like, if I went up and smacked him in the face, you guys would look at me like, are you crazy, bro? Yeah. Like you like, he's going to kill you get a like, death wish. Yeah. yeah. By the way, did you guys see, was it him? No, it was uh Robert Oberst. I don't remember who he was grappling with. He was doing jujitsu with a, like 150 pounds. Oh, you pound. just picked him up like this. Yeah. <laughs> the guy tried to arm bar him. He just <laughs> lifted him off the ground. This, hey, bro, when people say size Smash. doesn't matter, size does. fucking matters, dude. Yeah. Size matters. At dude. some Shit. point. It does. At some point. Like, cause I look, I did jujitsu. Yeah. I know how effective it is. I understand leverage. Hey, listen, I get all that. Hey, but when you're a 150 pound guy you and you got a great him. arm bar hey, with all the leverage, hey, listen, listen, homeboy's going to, he could curl you. So while yeah. we were, we were up in Tahoe. Okay. Doug and I. So I, I did, I find this out after I get up there. So, uh, Doug's up there with his, his daughter Bree and then she brings a, a friend up this kid Max great kid um he's been taking boxing lessons so he asked Katrina before I get there if she, he could box me 
No, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Why? And Katrina what's, what's totally said no, no. Said no, yeah. no, no, no. Like that. Why? But he again asked again for the kid is probably because he's been boxing. He's been taking yeah, boxing. But why does he want to box you? He wants to he wants to see what he can do. He's been practicing he he himself. <laughs> so and, and Katrina was like, Katrina was like, hell no, saying no yeah. to it. I said, why would you tell that young man that if he wants to do that, we can see find out. She's like, hell no, I don't want to see you get hurt. I said, me get hurt. I said, kid weighs a buck yeah, thirty five. Yeah. What? I don't give a shit if he's been boxing for five years. <laughs> like, I don't. Want to get molly whopped. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> did you, you learn it? No, of course not, dude. Of course not. My wife would have never let me. Doug wouldn't have let me either. I'm sure if Doug saw me strapping up the gloves with this kid <laughs> in the garage, he would have ran out there and stopped it real quick. <laughs> not on my watch. This is the first time this kid's with me. I'm not going to let you box him in the garage. Dude, you just reminded me. I, so I, I guarantee dude. I would show you size matters. 230 pounds and 130 pound kid who's been boxing you for You better a year, be the world 100%. champion at 130 pounds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm going to go beat like the, the, a professional fighter yeah. at that level but although I give him for three months <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know I remember when I was in high school there I was thought a, the balls on the kid you know what yeah what is he doing <laughs> I, I remember in high school once there was a fight and there was a, a one of our we had this PE teacher who was known for breaking up fights because he was big this big like old guy but he was massive mm -hmm. and I'll never forget he goes in and the guy he's like trying to break them up and they keep like swinging at each other so finally he gets a little physical and he picks he rips them apart and picks both of them up like well, little great. children yeah and everybody was like oh my oh. god yeah my roommate in college like so we were at this party and this guy was like being a dick to everybody and like he poured beer on my friend and my friend is like I told you how big he is like 6'8 yeah. so he grabs him and he literally holds him over the balcony just like this he's like you stop right now yeah. <laughs> the guy's like ah! Kill me! <laughs> like he was like he literally could have just been like just like a, a stack of books or something. He just grabbed him. Yeah. Dude, oh, have you ever had I've... somebody throw a beer on you in public like that before? Yeah. That's got to be the I most enraging. Throw, I had a chick throw a beer oh, on me across. That's fighting words. You just reminded me of a crazy yeah. old story like that. I was like, oh my god, I was with, I was with my buddies at. It was such a bitch move. It's bro. This was a, a girl did this right. Well, she was she was a, up above on this upper level of the bar. I'm sitting down below and I'm talking to my buddy. And all of a sudden, this beer comes flying. Full I beer. I sound like an <laughs> asshole. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't mean like I was meaning that for dudes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Then, anyways, I got you. I got I'm you, just, uh, yeah. just covering myself right there. there go. uh, Continue. So I get nailed. I get nailed by like the this. cup and everything. Yeah, full thing. And I'm like, and I look up and I see the girl, and she's going like this. And she's wow. looking right at me, and I'm like, I have no idea who this girl is right now. <laughs> just some no, random. Right. So I go walking Why is up she so there, angry? and I and I'm like. What the fuck, dude? Oh, I can't believe you, but she's like laying into me and stuff like that. You know, you would blah blah blah. And I'm like, I'm like, I, I'm so sorry. I said, but I think you have me confused with somebody else. Oh my god, you would blah blah. blah. So this chick, okay, was a bartender at that bar, okay, and I was hitting on her like a year before, and she gave me her number, and I never called her. Uh, <laughs> and she remembered so what she I, threw a beer at you yes dude she threw a beer at me for that like wow. I, just because i didn't call i'm like oh my i didn't even recognize her did you, you got my hopes up dude did you, did you want to date with her afterwards <laughs> yeah i did <laughs> <laughs> i do I, I said so what are you doing what are you doing like crazy hey listen uh, i'm really she's, you know i like those hot. crazy she sounds crazy. fun <laughs> she's probably hot. sounds like a good time <laughs> like, hey listen listen i'm really sorry you're right i should have yeah, called you back yeah, yeah. my phone looked at her yeah or if or if she wasn't hot you'd have been like yeah all right yeah, maybe oh, that's how dana white is oh, wow yeah. i'm glad you didn't end up with that one though adam I, bro that was crazy that's crazy right i'm like for not calling i'm like that's like a that's wild to me i mean it was literally that like i was talking to this girl at the bar my and i, I remembered the time that it that it happened because it was like a year before and it was late the bar was closing down and stuff like that and i was asking if she wanted to hang out later she gave me her number and i went home and fell asleep forgot all about it, it was a drunken night like yeah. you know i was just never never thought about it again it was the only time i'd seen her and i didn't think it was a big deal but boy was she fucking mad about that <laughs> you must she, have said some words to her before I don't she know, gave you the number dude, i don't know i must have i guess I'm i don't in know love with you that was <laughs> <laughs> you know love it first Say. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There's a few things that'll in that I can imagine that'll enrage that just bring out rage right away. That's got to be one of them. That and spitting. I feel like someone spits on you. Oh yeah. That's got to be one I've of them. I've had that happen too. Someone spit like in my zero face to, one time. Man, what kind of environments you? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's rough. Well, the old, that, these are that. like the old the twenties. You know what I'm saying? Going out all the time like that. Mm. We were. I've told this story on the podcast. Remember that was the when the strip club or the the taxi. Somebody took our taxi at three o'clock in the morning. Oh and yeah. Pretended to be me when it wasn't them with a group of guys. Uh -huh. oh, and then yeah. the taxi guy figured it out. 
like before they got down the street and then wow. he pulled over and we were all, we're, you know, me and my group, my crew are running down the street and they're all inside and like, ah, fuck you, yelling at that and the window's down and I'm telling him to get out and the dude spits through the window. Lands oh. right on my face. Oh, man. It was, it Chased was, the car? No, I punched him right through the window. Oh, oh window he had to crack down like this and right, if you spit him, I punched him right in and sent him in the other side, dude. Yeah. And the guy drove off and then he kicked them all out and then he came back around and then he picked all of us up. But, that's the first time that had ever happened to me, too. Some random dude just spit on my face like that. Bro, that's that. gross. You can catch something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sounds unsanitary. <laughs> Disgusting. All right, I got a study to bring up. They just did a study on um, on red light therapy, actually. Really good. A new one? Another study God, came they have, out. They have so much on it. You know what's funny? My sister, who's like not into like the wellness space. I mean, she's she, you know, she tries to stay healthy and whatever, but she's got three kids and she works and whatever. So this isn't like her 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 thing. She said, Sal, what do you know about red light therapy? I said, that's so weird. Like, why are you bringing that up? Yeah. I guess it's like, it's like becoming really. Oh, no, it's training. blowing up. Have you guys not? There's like, um, I've seen these um, masks that you wear hmm. that are like red light, but then you can, you can see through, you wear them. For your skin. Yeah, for your skin. And they just, it's like, a, a, like a, a, you literally wrap it around your head and then it's. A, so a, this, this study was in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, December of, of uh, <clears throat> last year. So this is really new. And it says, phototherapy improves muscle recovery and does not impair repeated bout effect in plyometric exercise. In other words, you get better recovery, but you still get the adaptation responses. You still get stronger. You still get whatever. So it's another study showing the recovery benefits of red light therapy. I actually, there's very few things that will show that. I that actually effect. hope that Juve does the mask thing because one of my favorite things about standing in the red light is I always notice my face and my skin. It has mm -hmm. like It almost looks like I went in a tanning bed with the glow yeah. that you get afterwards. And that's the thing that Katrina notices from it too. And I'm like, man, be, I'd be even more consistent if it was something I could lay in bed. Cause you can see through it. Right. So it's like, goes like this. Yeah. I wonder because of it's like, they got to use like, I don't know the technology behind their panels, like how they can replicate that in a smaller form. Well, I mean, they have it in the mini. Yeah, they do have the mini ones. They, they just have to like, so Justin, it down Justin brings more. up a great point. So if you read the studies, there's a certain wavelength and, the type of red light is important because that's what they show in the studies to work. Pretty right. sure AI can figure it out. If you, yeah, <laughs> let's shit. just ask chat GPT. Yeah. Right? We'll just, how, can we practice that for now? And every time we talk about something, how AI can figure that out. Oh yeah. God. I, I literally tried to I figure call him Jeeves. Cause I'll can you think back. of something? Can you seriously think of something that's like protected? Maybe like super manual labor. Cause then you have to, you have to design a robot that physically does like there's the power yeah. lines at PG and E. Right. But then again, all the trade, well, a lot of when, the trades anyway. Yeah. Well, I would think we, we're still going to need people's manual skills to fix things. You're going to not. We're going to create laws that are going to prevent. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to try and stop yeah, the inevitable. They can't, how are they going to build? That's what I'm saying. They're going to try to, they're going to try and prevent the inevitable by passing laws that say AI is not allowed to do this because we need to protect these jobs. So the jobs that'll stick around like and still inevitably get outcompeted are going to be ones with the strongest unions, the strongest voter blocks. But then there'll be companies competing with it that don't follow the rules. Right. That's you what know? I mean. It's and that'll be... just innovate anyway. Yeah, so like underground stuff. Yeah, it's oh, just like be, Uber, you know, just like, well, we're going to do it anyway. Uh, speaking yeah. of underground stuff, did you guys say I want to stay on the news because I know Doug doesn't like me talking about news when it gets old. Um, the news on Andrew Tate. Oh, yeah. What's yeah, what your guys' He got arrested. I mean, I, I just know they, like, went to his place in, was it Romania? Yeah. And then they arrested him. For I have human no idea. Trafficking? Oh, trafficking. Yeah. Which, this is the second time they tried to get him on this, and it was nothing. Yeah. And so, and He's I heard- it, Yeah, we got to see what happened. And I heard it was, what's her name? Greta Th Thunberg? How do you say it? Oh, so he did, were, a, he did a tweet to her. No, no, no. I heard it was her who called on him. I oh, thought that came out. God. Could you could you wow. fact check that for me? No, 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 no. Not, not she called on him. Yeah, I heard that. So here's okay. So maybe Doug will. She this called up. on him, and then they, what gave him away was the pizza box. What do you mean that he? Ordered? So he ordered a pizza while he was. So I saw. I watched the video, right? So he was talking shit about her, <laughs> and he's smoking a cigar, and he gets two pizzas delivered to him while he's doing a video. And on the pizza box is the, the is, address. Is the address or, or the uh, the company the the, oh, the pizza parlor, uh, and that's how they tracked him down, and then they got him. Yeah, but can, how can she get him to get? How can she get people to arrest him? Because she did. Him? Okay, just like it happened before. You ever heard of swatting? Yeah. Where people will call in these fake like oh, so I think she I don't know if that's that's true if she actually swatted him, but I heard it was her who called in on him. Do you know? I don't think she called, but she, I have to double check on. No, this. so so here's what I what I read. I read that they did a little tweet back and forth, 
<laughs> and that gave away his location. And then the authorities came and oh, got Oh, no, the him. pizza thing I know for sure gave away his that, that might have given away. And so sense. his location was given away and that they were already looking for him. In other words, that they were trying to look for him already. I don't know. Well, he's already been kicked off of multiple platforms. They're messing with his bank accounts. I mean, this just seems like an inevitable like, well, last step of like that authority coming in. Or because I know how much you guys love conspiracy theories. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the yeah. conspiracy is that he set it all up because now guess who's in the news cycle for the next 72 hours like crazy. He's the top news. Yeah. Because they haven't had the fight yet. Right. With the. Uh, is it Jake Paul or th didn't they organize yeah. that? Yep. So maybe he's like get, to generate more. He's so that's international the, traffic. The, the rumor is Boy, like that was an, that's an interesting thought. Uh, it's, I listen. If you know that there, you, there's not an, an an ounce of guilt of uh, in like that, there's no there's, there's no, no chance you can yeah. tie me like one of us. No one's tying us to anything like that to come out just so you get top news and then what he gets exonerated in in, uh, in a week. Yeah. And you're and you were. It the, also just hope it doesn't backfire. It, it, right. And <laughs> it also strength, strengthens his brand. Pinning. Right. It won't backfire as long as you know you're nowhere near it. If you're yeah. not anybody who's anything like that, and it right. comes out you get exonerated, then for sure it's only going to strengthen your brand, and you're the yeah. top of the I news don't know. cycle. You saw Alex Jones trial. They're able yeah. to do some things to phones. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, that was dude. weird. His own lawyer. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't stir that hornet's nest. His own lawyer texted uh, like a bunch of stuff to the other lawyer. It's like, how did you do that? Yeah. And that's got Alex Jones in trouble. Fishy. That's weird. That's an interesting theory, huh? I, I, you I know, can see that. I do. I do find it kind of weird that he decided to order pizza while he was in the middle of, of doing that, mm. and they they deliver it right to him on the video. Like, okay, I, I like how Adam's imagine conspiracy brain is just emerging. I feel yeah. like, <laughs> it's all you guys' fault. The, I drank the Kool Aid, bro. I like, drank the Kool Aid. Like a I'm flower that's now. Just you know how often I catch him on that uh, yeah. down the rabbit hole. Uh, page? <laughs> oh, I do. I like that one, dude. I do like that one. Yes, dude. I I do. There's a hole in Antarctica. However, you know that voice. Yeah, yeah. It comes Did you there. see Vicky post the one the other day? Congratulations to all the conspiracy theorists the last three years. Yeah, <laughs> we're like 10 out of 10. Yeah, 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 you're like 10 out of 10. I love that page, dude. Every day I read some weird shit on there. Oh. The last one I saw was- The world was, is weird, dude. There was, just, uh, did you guys admitted. see the last one that was on there where there was this, uh, this, this, this big military, uh, this big naval ship that was decommissioned and somebody was, uh, their job was to go through and take pictures of every room. And it took him, you know, like hours and hours and he stayed real late. And then he comes and he sends the the photos to whoever he's supposed to. And the guy goes, who's the guy in the picture with the ax? And he's like, what are you talking about? And I guess there's like in the pictures, there's a guy with an ax. And then they went in and they fucking investigated and they looked at the security camera and they never found the guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, where do they find all these dudes? I, that's, I think what I, part of why I'm now obsessed with that, you know, that maybe that'll be the shout out for our, our shout out today, the page, right? Ever, right? Because we, we, oh, yeah. we gave him a shout out already. Oh, we already we? shared that page? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you guys uh, shared that. Did we share that? Did we, we, Doug? No, we didn't. I don't know if we did it on the show or not. I don't think we shared it on yeah. the show. Well, hey, they deserve a second share. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Andrew's <laughs> saying we did. Already. We did. We did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we did already. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Sorry. We'll give you somebody else. So, I but you know, it's how many they come up with. I mean, I'm just like, damn, there's enough for a post every day. There's that many conspiracies that are running around. Like, I did not, I did not know oh, yeah. that. What was the one I sent you, Justin? I told you to post it about uh, the beer companies working together. Oh, well, you know, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that was funny. It was like, oh, um, here you go. Uh, uh Michelob, Michelob and Keystone. And Keystone. Oh, I saw the MK Join Ultra. Forces. <laughs> Search MK Ultra to learn all about it. <laughs> <laughs> I posted the other one that Justin, uh, and I'm getting all kinds of hate right now from the teachers. The one about the uh, the school, the school thing about your taxes, and then it says the, the public schools teaching, oh, oh, men have periods. And so that, that meme, I posted it, <clears throat> and I got a bunch of teachers that are all heated and DM me. You know what I find funny? And I, my, my response to them is that this, they, they get all mad. This is so inaccurate. We, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, a meme was not intended to be super accurate. A, a meme was supposed to be funny. Yeah. That's the point of a meme. If you yeah. can't laugh at yourself, I said, you probably shouldn't follow me because I make fun of myself all the time. And I think, and if you make fun of me, I'm not going to get all defensive about it. So right. why are you following someone like me? That's so funny to me. Like everybody laughs at my shit until it hits a spot for them. Yeah. And then it hits, yeah. the, it hits their job or hits their thing. And it's like, and then all of a sudden you get all the, Oh, you were, you thought all the other memes were funny. Yeah. <laughs> now that one's not funny. Yeah. Huh? yeah. 
it's we know what's funny to me about that is people call themselves out. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Like, you make a statement as a joke, and then the people call themselves out. Be like, well, that's not I'm like why. Well, well, I love that's the thing. That'd be like us getting mad at like all those memes about like podcasters just being like three like white guys. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Disc- you know, like this is their one chance to <laughs> yeah, hang out and have bro- I mean, you name it. We've been fun plenty of times, dude. Come <laughs> yeah, on. I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay, seriously. true. You fine. can't laugh. And if you if you <laughs> the get the podcast a, ones yeah. always make me bro, laugh. What does that so, say about you yeah. if you get offended by a meme? Like that's it is literally yeah. satire. I mean, that is literally what the memes are, dude. They're supposed to be funny, like that tongue in cheek type of deal. Like, it, and you can't laugh at it. Like, yeah. you're so lame. Also, if it is something that does hurt your feelings because they make a joke that maybe does affect you personally, unless someone knows you and is like, "Hey, here's a joke for you," Adam. right? Like, like, here's a put joke your for name you. in there. You yeah, know? <laughs> like they're not specifically. Yeah. Bro, that is that's a reflection of yourself. Do some digging. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You don't even know me. I post something and you get offended. What does that say about you? Like you yeah. obviously got triggered. That's obviously something you got to work on. Not yeah. me, dude. Yeah. Okay. So the one that we're going to do for today for the shout out, I wanted to, because this kind of goes back to when we were talking about like New Year's stuff and goals and all that. Like I wanted to start finding pages that were actually like something positive and not like super negative oh, in the beautiful. cycle to bring in. So there's one that I followed that I always like to, to check out constantly. The good news underscore movement and they just do like stories that are uplifting and like real like nice people out there looking out for each other and um you know people overcoming crazy things and so it's just something positive to bring in oh wow they already have like four four and a half million followers yeah they've grown crazy is it it like good stuff too it's not cheesy oh this does look good no it's it's good yeah it's not just like hokey or anything it's like real like cool stories that's a new goal of mine new goal of mine is to Focus less on negative things I have no influence over, and uh, try to seek out more positive. Did you guys? Did you guys yeah. do anything for New Year's resolutions? Did you make anything, or did, did you? Commit if I if I had to say I made a resolution, it would be that I'm going to turn off more of the negative stuff and mm-hmm. turn on more of the positive stuff, and I and I'm be con- I'm going to try and be more conscious of it because there's an illusion of of control with a lot of things. Yeah, and if I don't have an influence over it, like really then there's no use in me getting stressed out and angry about it. That's all. I'm trying. I'm not saying I'm going to be successful, but I'm definitely trying. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, what's up, everybody? Real quick, we have three workout bundles available right now in the month of January. All of them include nine months of exercise programming. Everything, sets, reps, exercises, video demos, the whole thing. Here's the three bundles. There's the new to weightlifting bundle, the body transformation bundle, and then the extreme intensity results bundle. Check those all out. They're all found at mapsjanuary.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Marianne Aleva. What are your thoughts on the carnivore diet? Yeah, you know, I picked this question because we're still getting people asking us about this, uh, the carnivore diet. Like many diets, there are, um, there are applications, but like many diets, these applications are specific and usually not for the average person. So I think we should talk Mm -hmm. about who may benefit from something like the carnivore diet and then who doesn't, we'll go there. Um, But who may benefit? Well, it's it's somewhat, um, I I guess you could categorize it as like the ultimate elimination diet, okay? So meat tends to be tolerated by most people. Meat also contains most essential nutrients. So you can get away with just eating meat, whereas you can't necessarily get away with just eating other maybe individual types of foods. And what it does is because it eliminates so many other foods because you're just eating meat, you can identify um, foods that may be causing autoimmune type issues. So the people who tend to do best on carnivore diets are people who tend to have kind of these hyper reactive immune systems where for whatever reason, and you know this is a, this is a big uh, you know, area of, of mystery for a lot of people, for whatever reason, eating foods like vegetables or roots or starches causes all kinds of strange autoimmune type reactions. And just going with meat makes them feel better, but not just, not because the meat itself is special, but rather because they're, the diet is devoid of foods that was causing that maybe have caused. What percentage of people do you actually think fall in that category? Small. Yeah, yeah, like give me a percentage. What do you think? Oh boy, if I had to guess, less than five, more than five, nah, one less than one percent. Okay, I would say super why? small. So why? Why would you want to be just a vegan, just a carnivore? Like I, I don't understand. I don't understand diet culture in itself. Like why? 
why people want to put mm. themselves in a in a in a more di- eating good and clean and balanced and appropriate for your body is already challenging enough. Why would you want to attach yourself to some dogmatic diet unless you're that one percent? Yeah. yeah, I think they just get influenced by people who have had life changing experiences from these from like because like King. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Good example. Example. terrible example, no. like Michaela Peterson. Yeah, Jordan Peterson. Like yeah, or even the daughter. Um, I forget her name right now, but like the doctor that um, was all about uh, just eating purely vegetables. Right. And, and oh, like Terry how, Walls. Terry Walls. Yeah. So there's. There's circumstances where um, people have like gone to the extreme side of it and they've, they become evangelists because it's like, it's so transformative for them. But um, I think that that influences a lot of like your everyday average person. It really has no application in that direction for them. Balances everything. Yeah. Well, look, if you're, if you suffer from severe autoimmune issues, like, like pain and inflammation or depression. Okay. And then you go on a diet and it solves this problem you've had for a decade <clears throat> where nothing else really helped you, you're going to become an evangelist. And that's what ends up happening. Now, the problem is- I would is that- even caution those people though, because it's like, again, less about the quote unquote diet and more about what were you eating before that was the right. insult. What, what yeah. exactly? And, and, deficient and, of. and yeah. back to this elimination thing, you know, food intolerances, uh, and I'm loosely using the term, are quite common. It's uncommon- for someone to have such severe food intolerances that they have to go all the way down to one food that they have. to, And, and now here's why carnivore diet gains some popularity. Cause here's what will happen to the average person. If they go on a just meat diet, number one, your calories are automatically going to drop. Here's why protein is extremely satiating. Meat is extremely satiating. So even if you eat as much as you want and you're just eating, let's say ribeye steaks, you're going to drop your calories, so you are going to lose weight. Right. And then you might have also, through the weight loss itself, because we know this with studies, if you just start to lose weight, lots of issues start to get solved. So then you're like, oh my God, I feel better. Oh my God, I have more energy. Oh my God. But really what it is, it's the weight loss. It's, the, it's reduced yeah, calories. So the, the reason why is because we're stupid and we're lazy. We're, as a species, we're, we, we want we want it the-, the, the Adam's in a mood, The right? easiest- <laughs> It is. It's the reason why. You know why? Because it it is the thing that it's one thing you have to eat. And guess what? Of all the single one things that you could eat, it provides the most. Yeah. If you were, if you could get away with it, you couldn't do just the one of anything else and actually live. You would die. Okay. On every, anything else of just the one one thing you can survive. It's the one, yeah, it's the one thing you can. So it is the simplest thing that somebody could potentially follow. Yet it's probably one of the worst ideas for 99.9% of the population. And that's, by the way, you made a good point. Uh, Simple. Simple is also very alluring to people because everything seems so complicated, but you're telling me. That I could just eat this and that's it. And I don't have to think about anything else. I don't else. got to weigh. I don't got to track it. I can have as much as I want. I can have it whenever I want. Like, oh my God. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it, you know, 100%. But just because you can, by the way, because you, you made the point that you could just eat meat and you're likely to not have a nutrient deficiency, or at least it'll take a long time. Because, and this is a fact, uh, animal meat uh, is the most nutrient dense single food you can find on the planet. You're, you're, you're probably not going to get a nutrient deficiency by eating fresh meat only, um, although it could still happen. Unless it's lean. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Then, yeah, yeah then you're then you you're not in trouble. Then cuts. you're in trouble. But if you eat fresh meat and you get the fats and protein, especially if you throw in organ meats, you're probably not going to get an, a nutrient deficiency. But just because you can get away with it doesn't make it ideal. Yeah. You're still lacking things like fiber. There's phytonutrients that have potential benefits. And it's just not uh, ideal. So... I think the same thing about the carnivore diet as I do about the ketogenic diet or vegan diet or I other. I feel like it's already evolving, which is kind of hilarious to me. Like Dr. Paul Saladino puts out great information, but also too is now advocating for like honey yeah, to introduce fruit. it, berries. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, weird. Now all of a sudden it's kind of turned a little more paleo. Like, yeah. so I, I think that uh, the initial shock of like the counter to what was being promoted a lot, which was like vegan diets and which was a lot more carb you know, driven type of, um, yeah. diets. Like this is like the opposite. And so it's like, it, you know, consumers are so swayed by something that's like, you know, out of left field. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's try this. I've yeah. never done that. The simpler so a diet is, the more restrictive it is. Yeah. So the simpler it is, the more restrictive it is, the more restrictive it is, the more, the more likely you're going to fail. Yeah. It's, it's already a high fail rate as it is with diets. 
And if you follow one that's extremely restrictive, then it's your your rate increases. So and then and if you don't need if you do not because but I do agree if you fall in that category if you're a Michaela Peterson, and it was the only only thing that solved. I mean, all your it, auto, it changed her life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. That's an amazing therapy. But that's, that's not great. You can do that. That's not the people that are asking these questions. It's never that. But that person already knows that they solved it. Yeah. They solved it, and it changed their life. They don't need to ask. Mind and you know, pump what the, you know what the problem what is? Is the people arguing against her? They'll say to her, "No, you're wrong. You're wrong." I think that's the wrong thing to do. Yeah. There are cases for extreme diets for a lot of different people, like ketogenic diets. Yeah. were the first medical treatments for epilepsy. Before mm -hmm. epilepsy drugs existed, there were it was a decent percentage, not everybody, but a decent percentage of people with epilepsy were cured, had no seizures by going on a ketogenic diet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so for them, ketogenic diet was ideal, and for most people, uh, otherwise, it's not. So um, this is true uh, for all of them. And 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 again, the carnivore diet. It, one of the reasons why it became so popular was it's simple. It produces weight loss because, again, it, it, it you know results in lower calories. And here's the third part, which is it was so wild and opposite from what the narrative was at the time, which was meat's bad for you and you got to just eat vegetables. And then you had people you know going carnivore going, yeah. oh, my God, look at my blood lipids. Oh, my God, my blood pressure is better, oh my, which is result yeah. from the lower calorie, basically, that it, it became popular. This is why um, or how the – um, Atkins diet became popular in the 90s because the message then was low fat. Atkins comes out, says, no, eat as much fat as you want, just eat low carb. Part of the reason why it became popular was it was so opposite. So, But no, I would never recommend, the, the only person I would ever recommend a carnivore diet to would be a person who went through all the, the channels, worked with a functional medicine practitioner and had to go all the way down to just meat as an elimination diet to kind of figure out you know, some of their problems. Next question is from Matt Mercer. What are some of your best cues to get someone to retract their shoulder blades using the correct muscle pattern so their shoulders aren't rolled forward? You know, training people in person, because um, I think we should communicate to online coaches, but when you train people in person, one of the best thing, possible things you could do is stand behind the person while they're doing a simple exercise like a cable row and ask them, hey, can I put my hands on your shoulders and place you in proper position? And they'll say, yes, usually. And then I would put my hands on their shoulders. I would use my knee to cue their mid, mid back. And then I'd pull their shoulder blades back and down so that it was in position. Now, if I can't, if I don't have that ability, then I would use cues like, um, imagine you're squeezing a pencil between your shoulder blades, but also don't shrug your shoulders. So shoulder blades down and back. And you want to try and do that without you pulling back with your hands. You got to be able to do that without doing anything with your hands. Then from there, I would have them do like a row or yeah, something like that. Yeah, chest up high, drive the elbows back, pinch your shoulder blades if you're pinching a, uh, pinching a pencil in between it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I love your cue too of actually just manually. I used to sit them in a seated row and then I would get behind them and I would, I would actually do it for them. And I yep. tell them, relax your shoulders, allow me to do this. And I would retract, protract, retract, protract. And I'd be like, okay, now you control that. And then I would make them control it and mm -hmm. be like, okay, now when I tell you to retract and squeeze your shoulder blades, that's this is the position I'm, I'm wanting to do. So as we go through this movement, I want you to think about doing that. And so manually taking them through that and making them feel that. And then you're also cueing with your, your finger by having them squeeze or, yeah. or retract. But yeah, I, I, I for sure put my fingers between their shoulder blades to try and get them to squeeze and get that last bit. But I mean, to get them to understand even like the overall function of the shoulders and have them start by elevating their shoulders, pulling their shoulders back, bringing them down, yeah. coming forward. And so they just understand uh, how to manipulate them like that first and foremost, and then kind of getting them set in place uh, and be able to brace because, you know, naturally there's a lot of compensations that happen with the lower back arching and, you know, all that kind of stuff um, is to, you know, just make sure that we figure out how to be yeah. anchored. In One position. of the best exercises for this is a, pro a prone Cobra where you're, you're really utilizing external rotation, right? Of the hands, bringing the yeah. arms back. Rowing is good too. But the thing with rowing is if the person doesn't know how to really connect with that mid back area and squeeze the shoulders back, what they'll actually often do is roll their shoulders forward even more. They'll right. pull the handles back and get in this for, in fact, I, I would use this as a way to sell training. I would have a person do a row, then I'd get behind them and I'd fix their posture with my hands and then I'd have them do a couple reps with me there. Then I'd let go, have them do more reps and then I'd point to them that they're, oh, look, you went right back out of form mm. without realizing it. This may be why, you know, working with a trainer would be so valuable for you. Um, but prone Cobra, if you're looking for an exercise to work on this pattern, 
prone cobra. And then if you want to strengthen this pattern, then just your typical, you know, any kind of version of a row. Although I'd say a bent over row is harder Oh yeah, to I figure would, out. I would never, I would never teach this on. But if you cannot retract your shoulders, and yeah. I wouldn't bend over row. Uh, no, seated row seated, would be yeah. easier. Right? Seated, way a great. Yeah, one way, to do way. This And you know, I, I like to take someone like this who's having a hard time and and really lighten the load so it's super light yes. and do isometric holds. Mm -hmm. So they they row in like we're talking about, and you you cue and do all the things we're saying, and then you intensify it, hold it for like five seconds, then come out. So go really light and just you're you're really just teaching them how to connect. By the way. I would shorten sometimes the range of motion because I noticed that if a client pulled the handle back further, that their shoulder was more likely to roll forward. So I'd have it on, have, have them pull the shoulders back, only pull back so far, hold the handle with their hands. Don't pull the handle back any further. Just pull the shoulder blades back even more. I found that to be a more effective cue than saying pull the handles back more because if they pulled more with the handle, I would always notice that they would end up yeah. rolling forward. Next question is from Grant Satterthwaite. What are your thoughts on deload weeks? I like how like taking time off and recovery has been labeled as a deload week. <laughs> it's controversial. I mean, that's, that's really what it is, right? Yeah. You know what's interesting about this? When they do studies, so a deload week essentially is you do your normal workouts and then you get to your deload week and you're going lighter, lower intensity, less volume. Basically think of it as a like recovery week. Okay. <clears throat> so you're going to the gym and you're going like 50% of what you normally would or 30% of what you normally would. What's interesting about this is studies show that your muscle gains happen the most during this period of time. It's the recovery process where you build muscle and strength and all that stuff. It's not during the workout. So deload weeks are, if you're, by the way, I want to say this, if you're really consistent, yeah. uh, you know, selling a deload week to someone who can't be consistent. You've been getting not, after it consistently. Yeah. Like, like the average person naturally does deload weeks by missing workouts, I would say. Yeah. But if you're like super consistent week in, week out then I think scheduling a deload week every six to eight weeks um, is a good idea. And what you'll notice is like your gains will increase quite substantially at the end of that uh, deload week. So I think that they're essential for people who don't miss workouts, meaning it's essential that you you program them in your workout. I, I'm going to go as far as say they, if you're a person who consistently work at, works out, you probably don't do enough deload weeks. Yeah. And if you're somebody who doesn't consistently work out, you don't have any business worrying about deload weeks. Mm -hmm. Because I actually think that the average person who is really consistent, the, the gym junkie, the exercise enthusiast, that person actually tends to overtrain and overreach. Do more, trying to push to do the sweat all the time, looking for the soreness all the time. And those people actually would probably greatly benefit with a deload week, maybe once every three to four weeks even, because that person is constantly overreaching and then scaling back for one week is not going to regress them. If anything, it might accelerate their progress. So yeah. if you're listening and you are super consistent and it's you haven't done a week recently where you go at 20 to 30 percent, still work out. But you just you you're go, going easy. Yeah, you go easy. you go really easy for a week. I mean, we know this. But they did that study where it was the gr one group that took a, a week off every four weeks, completely off, and they saw as much progress as the person that took no weeks off over that over the course of that study. Yeah. Right. So doing a deload week is certainly not going to regress. It's not going to hurt you. And that yeah. was every four weeks. So I'm going to make the argument that most people probably should have almost a monthly deload week if you're a hardcore consistent person because you're probably more likely to overreach than not do enough. Yeah, this is also where I like to advocate for actually following a legit program, like following something that's scheduled out. So at the end of that too, like it just kind of naturally falls into, you know, a time for you to go through a deload week if you're going to transition to, to then another program or something else that you're going to consistently get after. Uh, so that way it's just sort of like it's less of uh, a randomness to it. Yeah, I've never programmed, uh, just you know, truth be told, personally, I've never programmed a deload week. I, I fall in that category of, uh, you know, person who tends to overdo it. But I just started programming them in. And it's about every, I'd say, five to six weeks. And what I do is I go to the gym, I go super easy, and I focus on mobility. I focus on stretching, mobility. And I and it's like, man, what a game changer. I mean, literally, uh, my results are so much better from doing this, less pain. I, I feel like I'm less on that edge of overtraining. So I, if you're like I was, you're going to have to program it. Don't do what I did, which is like, oh, I'll just take a deload week when I feel like I need it because mm -hmm. I never did. Next question is from Peter in Jemmy 57. 
Is it effective at all to do your compound lifts at the end of your workouts? With the gyms filling up at this time, sometimes it's hard to get the main lifts in at the beginning. All right. So first off, doing them is better than not doing them. I was going to say, effective at all, of course it's effective because you did them. (laughs) Now, I I will say this. So first off, let's preface this, that for the most part, compound lifts are better done in the beginning. You have more energy, better stability. They're the bigger bang for your buck exercises, so you should do them at the beginning. That being said, there are cases where compound lifts at the end are superior. And one case I can think of off the top of my head is when you have trouble connecting Mm. to a lagging body part that you're trying to develop. So for example, if you're somebody that's really trying to develop your, let's say your butt and you're doing lots of squats and your butt isn't developing the way you want, sometimes it's better to start your workout out with isolation exercises for your butt. So you could feel it. You get some blood flow there. You get a pump there. You feel the burn. Then go do your compound lift. The pre-exhaust method. Yeah. And yeah. you have a natural cue like, Oh, okay. If I position myself now, I can really feel my butt working when I'm doing the squat. So you could do this with, you know, your, your chest, your lats, your shoulders. If those are lagging body parts and the compound lifts aren't doing it for you, sometimes it's better to start with the isolation lift than go to the compound. That's really the only case I see is like, um, if it's unresponsive, yeah. like if you're not feeling like it's, it's being included in those big compound lifts and it's a major muscle group, uh, that you're trying to develop. But, um, in terms of the actual function of a lot of like, you're going to have your best performance when you're not exhausted at all. Yeah. That's yeah. just like bottom line. So, um, if, if I'm looking at it for, in, in terms of like, uh, progressing, uh, strength wise in those specific lifts, I would have them in the beginning. You know, I, if, if this was my client, I would tell him, I don't care. I would say, yeah, cause what's the most important thing that you do it, Yeah, that you do it. And I don't care if you, if, if we were like talking performance, a competitor who's got to do a squat meet and this and that, like of course we have to organize it. We want the, we need to max out every single workout, Right. but you are going to get 99% of the benefits by just doing the movement. Even if you were working at a say 10% less yeah. capacity or whatever. So I would, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you do. And, and In what you know, what matters more is the fact that you, 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 you got there, you're going to the gym, you're not discouraged because you can't do your compound lifts first because they're completely backed up. You're not going to sit around and do nothing for 23 minutes. You're going to go through your workout. And then when the squat rack opens up, you're going to go over and do it and you're going to be just fine. And yeah. you're going to see great results. And now some tips, yeah. uh, you want to go lighter right? and you want to <laughs> focus on form and technique and uh, really slow, I'd say slow things down, have more control. Well, what a great, okay. So we talk about this yeah. all the time. People ask us about, you know, tempo, oh, yeah. tempo, Change squats, variables. isometric stuff. I, mess with some of your other variables. Yeah. Maybe, oh, you know what? Today, I, today's not going to be my super heavy squat day because I'm not going to be able to get to it till the end of my workout. So you know what? Maybe I'm going to do those pause squats yep. or maybe I'm going to slow the tempo down to a five second negative. I haven't done yep. that in a really long time. Great time to, to play with those things when, when you get hit with something like yeah. this. You know, it's funny when I was a kid, I really wanted to develop my shoulders and I did, I would start my workouts out. This was as a teenager with rear flies. Cause I read an article talking about how the rear delt was so important for shoulder, you know, appearance. And then side, and then I did side laterals and then I do overhead presses and my shoulders developed phenomenally because I was able to connect better. Otherwise it was like an arm press. When I would do overhead press, I think my arms were taking over too much. Mm. So it was that pre-exhaust kind of thing that I talked about earlier and it really worked. And I used this uh, on clients whenever they had trouble connecting to a muscle. We would do the isolation first, then go to lift. But the point you make too, Adam, is is uh, exceptional. It's just going to change. Like if I'm doing deadlifts at the beginning of the workout, it's going to be like the weight and the power and the strength and the tension. If I do deadlifts at the end of the workout, I'm it's about squeezing yeah. and slowing down. Totally different intent. Totally a different intent. Both valuable though. So that's right. the thing. They're both totally right valuable. and probably good. I mean, that's the way I kind of would look at something like that instead of it'd a, be like a switch up, right? Right. Instead of it being like a, a negative thing, like oh damn it, I don't get the squat for it. It's more like oh you know what? It's been a while since I've done the tempo squats. Oh, it's been a while exactly. since I've slowed down and controlled form and look at it as a blessing in disguise. Like oh now it's forcing you to go that direction because you can't squat first. And then the days you come in. And you get to go right into it. It's like, oh, I'm going to get after it today. Totally. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. You can find Adam on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. 
Today, we're gonna to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me, it was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 